boom thought i wasn't there for a second that's what you thought but i was there i was just over there in the corner waiting to jump out and give you a little jump scare i don't know if you uh saw that i don't know if my camera was going at that point in time but anyway we're here let me put these drones on so i can hear what i sound like hear what the audio sounds like in this video i want to talk about just the in this video i'm going to talk about my language journey so to speak my journey learning languages at first i'm going to talk about my language journey which first and foremost is my english hello 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 with my english uh, it turns out that i'm actually pretty good at english so we're going to impress you with my native speaking abilities in the uh, english language as you can see in the thumbnail i use the maryland flag to represent english i use different flags from different countries and usually, you know, they use the country of origin, but why do that when I can just do the country that I want to put there? So Maryland was the representation of English. And how did I learn English? Well, I learned it from parents being in United States of America, but I didn't learn it the easy way. No, some people are just born speaking a language. You might say that's not true. You're probably right. But the point is. I learned English the hard way, which is going through uh, English. Uh, I, I learned English the hard way by going through uh, the process of being born and uh, learning English like from parents and whatnot and trying to learn how to speak. You might say, well, everyone does that. Well, it took me a very hard time to learn how to speak well. How about that? Or good. I'm OK with using improper English every once in a while. So, yeah, that's how I learned English. Not that much of an issue. Uh, yeah, but English was definitely a difficult one. I mean, there was definitely aspects of English that made it difficult uh, to, to learn, even as a native speaker. Some might call me a native speaker of English. But then let's go into the next uh, language, because I had someone comment on my video the other day that they did not know that I spoke Spanish, which to me, I felt like that was unacceptable. I'm like, how how have I had this channel for so long? And then there's anyone that doesn't know that I speak in uh, Spanish. That means I'm not speaking Spanish enough on my channel. That's what I that's the thing. But since everyone here speaks pretty much English, I that's probably the reason why I, there's not too many too many people who know that I speak Spanish because I don't really speak Spanish on my channel. I usually just stick with the uh, the lingo of English. But anyway, I I definitely think that um, I, I want to get into this. So my English, my Spanish journey started when I was in high school. You have to learn a language when you're in school. When you're learning a language in school, you pretty much have to start from uh, the basics a lot of the time, because most people in the United States really don't be learning another language until like high school. So you start from the very, very, very bottom. Unless you have like maybe immigrant parents that speak uh, one of the languages that you have to learn. In my school, only thing that we had, well, I think, was English. Well, obviously English. I mean, Spanish, French, and and German. And I mean, like, I don't know why German over all the other languages that you could learn. Because, I mean, most of the German people you're going to meet are going to have pretty good English. So it's like, I, I guess it could be a useful language to learn, but... I don't know. So I chose Spanish because I feel like there's a lot of people in the United States that speak Spanish. And, you know, there's probably, you know, if I'm going to have to learn a language and I high school, I didn't even want to learn a language at first. But I was like, if I have to learn a language, I might as well learn a language that is actually has some use to it. If, you know, some run into a Hispanic speaking person one day, I might be able to drop some lingo on them like a hola or a como estas. And I was like, you know what, that's what I'll do. So in high school, I had to take the language of Spanish and I never really thought that I would ever be interested in actually learning the language when I first started taking Spanish in high school I was about 14 years of age roughly speaking so I first started learning Spanish when I was 14 years of age I've been learning it from wait what is that uh, 10 uh, how old am I now I'm, I'm like 27 or 26 one of the two so I've been learning Spanish for over a decade almost half of my life I've been learning Spanish 
And but that's that's getting ahead of myself here. First off, what happened with the Spanish is I didn't have a desire to learn it. So what I started to do was I started uh, just failing the class. Uh, I think I had like a D. So, I mean, I wasn't failing it, but I had a D. And then uh, through a couple of things got me motivated to learn the language. One of the things that got me learn motivated to learn the Spanish language was the, uh, the I saw the two teachers speaking. I saw two teachers speaking. They came in the class because this never happened before. Usually the teacher, the Spanish teacher is speaking a lot of English to us. He might, you know, drop some Spanish here and there. He'll drop some lingo on us, but a lot of English to try to teach us the Spanish. But then the two teachers and even the Spanish that he was speaking that, you know, he would drop a lot of English in there. And I'm just like, all right, that this is not really interesting to me. But then I saw him, you know, this, you know, obviously American guy talk to this other, obviously American lady. And it's just like, and I mean, obviously it's not really a good term to use when it comes down to Americans because Americans come all shapes and sizes and blah, 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 blah. But based off their English speaking skills is what I'm saying. Like they, I knew that they were American knowing that they were American and then just seeing them switch off to Spanish and then speak with each other in such perfect Spanish. Well, maybe not perfect, but to my ear it was pretty damn good at that point in time. I was like, that is cool. And I want to do that. I want to figure out how I can do that right there. So essentially, that is what I decided to do is uh, start that got my interest in. I didn't start at that point to decide I didn't want to do it, but I did start getting a little bit more interested in it. And then at the same time, there was this uh, gal in my class. She helped me because she was always doing good in school for some reason. She just always had A's and B's and A's. I'm pretty sure just A's and just like everything. And I was like, all right, well, let me uh, hop in. Uh, she, you know, she came in and started helping me with my Spanish. So that actually gave me some motivation as well. But it was mostly just seeing those two teachers speak and then kind of just looking at that thing like where something you do as a young child, you do as a young child, uh, you learn a language, you learn how to write with your left or right hand, like all these things that you do when you're young as an adult or someone in high school, you kind of don't do them anymore. So I just wanted to see what that experience was like after so many years of not learning how to do these things. So for me, I was like, that was part of my motivation of learning the language. And I also just want to be able to have a full conversation with someone and no one understand what I'm saying, except for me and the person that I'm talking to. That would, that would have been kind of cool. So for, especially since a lot of people that I know and a lot of Americans didn't speak the language. So that was kind of like my initial interest in the language that kind of got me going. Eventually during that summer, eventually during that class, I started getting better at it. And then I ended the class with maybe like a C or something like that. I wasn't great, but I went from like a failing to like a D to a C. So that's not bad. So when I went from failing the language of Spanish to uh, getting a C, at that point, I was already I was locked in. I was like, I'm, I'm learning Spanish. I'm going to get good at Spanish. And that's what I pretty much did. I spent the entire summer just practicing, drilling, 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 drilling Spanish. And then eventually what happened was I went from being able to pretty much understand absolutely nothing the teacher was saying to the next semester where I took Spanish. I uh, was able to pretty much understand everything the teacher was saying. And then also I was able to get 100 percent on most of the coursework that the teacher was giving us and stuff for the things that I didn't do. And then, of course, if you don't do the work, then obviously you're not going to get a good grade on the work. So I was like, all right, well, that's that that was at that point I was already locked in. So I spent the next several years in high school learning Spanish. I was a teacher's uh, we call him teacher pet. No, a teacher's aide when I was helping. They were I was basically learning how to uh, teach Spanish to some degree as well. I was the teacher's aide, you know, practicing Spanish even more so. And then eventually what happened was I went to uh, college, started learning a little bit more Spanish for the first two semesters of college. And then after that, I eventually went off to Costa Rica. And that's when I really started drilling in my Spanish. That was just me trying to constantly speak Spanish. But here was the problem with Costa Rica, or at least that I had personally, is that a lot of people where I was at in Costa Rica spoke English. A lot of the people that were there were like foreign exchange students, whether from Europe or United States, or a lot of the people were in just Costa Ricans in general, a lot of them, at least when I first got there where I was at, a lot of them spoke English. I had to find a way 
to get away from all of the English speakers if I really wanted to practice Spanish. So one thing I would do, for example, a lot of the taxi drivers either didn't speak English or spoke very little, little English. So I or just had a preference to speak Spanish. So a lot of the times I would just try to have a conversation every time me and a bunch of all the other foreign exchange students got into the school. I, w I mean, in the taxi, I would try my best to speak Spanish with them. And then that was one of the big ways that I started learning Spanish uh, when I was there. And I would also, to, tr to some degree, try to separate myself from the uh, English speaking people every once in a while. And then I would try to speak Spanish with all of the non English speaking people there. Uh, and that was very difficult. I actually had one Costa Rican tell me like, oh, I don't speak Spanish uh, socially. I only speak Spanish for work. And to me, that was very bizarre. Like I came to Costa Rica and there was a lot of Costa Ricans who just spoke English. It was like they were just speaking English. And that's one of the things around the world. I see that where a lot of people have the issue with their Americans, you know, and English native English speakers, they always are said to be like people who are not interested in learning languages. And they always say that they expect everyone to learn English and all of that. But then when Americans actually try to learn another language, a lot of the times they end up just speaking English to us anyway. And a lot of the times, to be completely honest, the people that you try to speak with, their English is already so much better than the language that you're trying to learn that you don't even have a desire. I mean, it doesn't even make sense to to communicate in that language. So a lot of the times that's what I experienced when I was in Costa Rica. I mean, I was pretty good in Spanish by the time I went to Costa Rica. At that point, I've been learning it since, uh, let's see, about five years. I started learning it um, pretty early on. So, I, I mean, for me, I think that I was pretty good at the language. I, I still needed a lot of work. I still need a lot of work, but I was pretty good at the language and I could have a conversation in the language. Uh, there was some things I didn't understand. And if someone spoke in a winner, which was very difficult to understand, well, then I would have some issues. Eventually, what happened was I uh, saw when I was there that there were so many Europeans there that spoke like five or six or seven different languages. And that motivated me to start learning another different language. Uh, for me, I just felt like uh, I didn't really have a desire to learn German. So a lot of the Germans there I saw, there was a lot of French people and German people there. And I was like, all right, well, I didn't really have a desire to learn German. Uh, so I was like, well, how about French? French, there's a lot of people that speak French. There's a lot of uh, African countries that speak French. There's obviously French in France. There's French right up there in Quebec. I had put that in the thumbnail. And also there's some places in the South and Caribbean locations that speak a little bit of French, if not some French Creole. And usually the people that speak French Creole also, there's a portion of that population that speak French as well, whether a large portion or a small portion. So for me, uh, that motivated me to start learning French. I can't remember the year I started learning French or how long I was learning French, but it started around 2015, 2016 is when I started learning French. And my French was, uh, I actually learned French pretty quickly. I actually got to the point where I can understand and have conversations in French pretty quickly. I think within like six months, I was able to watch movies, read books, and have conversations. So you're not like super high level conversations. I wasn't talking about uh, PhD level topics here, but I was able to have some conversation, understand, watch movies, Netflix, and all of that in sp uh, French at that point in time after about six months of learning it. And, uh, that was just because of my Spanish and my English. If you know Spanish, you know English, a lot of the information that you try to learn when you're trying to learn uh, French will come over because a lot of people don't realize how much French has influenced English and then also how much Latin languages in general or Latin itself rather has influenced English. So and then also Spanish and French are obviously related languages. They're in the same language family, although they're phonetically very differently, phonetically meaning the way that you pronounce pronunciate certain words. Obviously, pronunciating that word is not the best, uh, easiest thing for me to do. So the point is, uh, I learned French at that point. And at that point, I kind of got the language bug, the very the language bug. And this is the this is where things start getting out of hand. What is the language bug? It's really the internet bug. It's like the internet bug where and everyone on the internet who wants to learn a language, their goal, they, the, inter the, the language bug is when you want to start learning so many different languages that you never really get great at any of the languages. You kind of get OK at a bunch of different languages and you're just learning, 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 learning like five different languages. So you can say you speak these languages, but really you don't speak those languages all that well. Like You can't have a 
you can have basic conversation in all of these languages, but you can't really have high or even mid level conversations like this conversation that I'm having with you right now. You probably wouldn't be able to have this conversation in that language, or maybe you could have it like this because I'm not really talking about anything that deep, but like uh, slightly above this conversation, but you know, slightly below high level philosophy or whatever the case may be. A lot of people would have a hard time communicating that language because they're learning so many languages at once. For me, that's one thing that I tried to, that's kind of what happened with me. I kind of started learning a bunch of different languages, for example, Portuguese. At this point, I was already pretty good at French as far as being able to communicate, understand French and all of that. So I started learning Portuguese and Portuguese and Spanish were so close together. I was like, this shouldn't be that difficult. Obviously it wasn't because I got good very, very quickly. I was able to understand and read. I was able to read Portuguese already pretty much. But I got better at reading uh, and I also was able to learn Portuguese. I don't know how long it took me to get to a conversational level, but I was able to have some basic level conversation pretty quickly if, within a few months. That wasn't that difficult because I had Spanish at that point. I had English and I had French. And once again, English is so heavily influenced by Latin. I think a roughly 60 percent comes from either French or Latin. So for me, that large percentage of that English base alone helps it. You learn a lot of these Latin languages. And then if you already, I already spoke Spanish at a very high level at that point in time, I spoke French at a okay level. And then I spoke, um, and then, so that helped me learn Portuguese pretty quickly. But at this point, the language bug took full control of my brain, full control of my brain. And I decided, you know what, how about I learn a uh, difficult languages because I, I I got you know at this point I started learning uh, all of these languages that were super related and I was like why don't I learn a difficult language that is completely outside of the European sphere and that's when I started learning Chinese specifically Mandarin Chinese because you always get that one person who's like um, I read a book once I saw the internet once and uh, it's technically Mandarin. I'm like, all right, well, I mean, what percentage of Chinese speakers are Mandarin speakers? Of the language family that they call Chinese, how much of them are Mandarin speakers? When people who are Chinese refer to their language, oftentimes they'll just say Chinese. They won't say Mandarin. Most of the time, from my personal experience, maybe you've experienced something different. I don't know. So my point is, though, uh, I was starting to learn Mandarin Chinese or just we're, from this point on, we're just going to call it Chinese. Um, I started learning Mandarin. I mean, well, whatever. I started learning the language. And to me, it was to my surprise that Mandarin wasn't as complex as I thought it would be. First off, at that point, I already had learned a few different languages, English, Spanish, French and Portuguese in that order. So I already had four languages under my belt. Um, so at that point, learning the skill of learning languages, I already had somewhat developed. But also the skill of learning uh, English. Oh, I'm sorry, the skill of learning uh, Mandarin was also something that I, I didn't have. It was a completely foreign languages, no pun intended. So for me, it was just like I, I definitely was surprised by the level of not difficulty that Chinese has, because a lot of the times you hear People say like, oh, that's basically in Chinese. Like a lot of times people would say things like that to refer to something that is difficult to learn or difficult to understand rather. But to me, I, speaking Chinese is difficult because of the tones. Reading Chinese is not nearly as difficult, I, I think, as a lot of people think it is. And as far as understanding Chinese, I think that's actually the easiest thing to learn how to do is to understand when someone is speaking Chinese to you, especially if they're speaking relatively clear. I mean, obviously, in every single language, uh, you have people have a hard time understanding certain people within that language. But for me, I think that with Spanish uh, or with Chinese, the skill that I got the best at was understanding it when someone was speaking it. I think that was one of the easiest things. And then also reading it. Basically, the input, the output is difficult when you're trying to speak it, when you're trying to write it. In fact, actually, I would have to say I take that back. I think that I'm probably about as good at writing it as I am, or typing it specifically. Writing it, I don't write in English barely. So uh, typing in Chinese is another thing that... Uh, 
makes Chinese a lot easier when you learn that you don't actually have to learn how to write the language. You have to learn how to read the language. You have to know how to recognize the characters. But you don't actually have to write the language down. And to me, some people, well, some people will say that, you know, you, it helps you to actually know how to write the language, because if you know how to write it, you'll be able to remember the characters a lot better. I think I kind of disagree with that. If you learn how to type the language, you know how, how to read the language and you learn how to recognize the characters when you're typing the language. And then also you learn how to understand the language when it's spoken to you. I don't think that you need to learn, learn how to write the language. I recognize a bunch of different characters without ever having had really learned how to write them down. So. Uh, but my Mandarin never really got good because I kept learning on and off. I kept trying to learn it and then I would stop learning Mandarin and then I would start learning it and then I would stop learning because I was like, I'm just learning too many things at once. And then also at that point in time, when I started learning Mandarin, I was also in college. At this point, I was learning. Uh, I was in uh, I was studying biology. I was a biology major in college studying Spanish, French, Portuguese and Chinese. And I'm like, all right, well, something has to give here. Something has to give. So I stopped learning French and Portuguese because I kind of was already pretty good at those languages. And I was like, I can probably pick these back languages back up whenever I want to. At this point, I got to a point where I could have a conversation with them. I could read them. I could read books in those languages, not super complex books, but I could read books. I have read a book in French. I have read a book in Portuguese, a very simple book in Portuguese, but a, a book nonetheless. And I was like, I can pick these languages up whenever. Even sometimes now, and I will watch a video in French or Portuguese, and I just, for old time's sake, and I can still kind of pick up the language. But it's been years since I've really tried hard to practice these languages. So I was never actually really, really, I, I, well, right now, I'm not actually really, really good at the French and the Portuguese. And uh, with, with Chinese, though, I, I eventually decided to just kind of focus on Chinese and Spanish. Because I, my, I recognized with learning all of these different languages, my Spanish started getting worse and it was never really getting to the point where I could get it to a super high level with, with, with Spanish. And that started to annoy me. So I was like, all right, well, let me just uh, focus on Spanish and Chinese because Spanish and Chinese are like the languages that most, you know, you got Spanish, Chinese and English and you can be able to speak with like one eighth of the population or like one fourth of the population of human beings. That was kind of the logic that I used to focus, narrow down my focus, get rid of French and Portuguese. First of all, I was like Portuguese, as long as I get better at Spanish, I think that transitioning, if I ever want to learn Portuguese, it should be pretty easy. I already learned Portuguese to a high level once. So I also have that background in Portuguese. So I, was like, I don't really need to learn that right now. So then I was like, all right, in French, I already, my French was, was and probably well maybe not is but it definitely was much better than my portuguese even though spanish was much better than my french and spanish is closer to portuguese i still spent more time on french than i did portuguese so uh i was like i can all i can always go back to learning french and then i'll be able to pick it up pretty quickly like i said in the beginning of the video i learned french and like i learned to be able to have uh an okay level conversation in French in like six months and I was able to speak it. I mean, I was able to uh, understand it pretty well and I was able to read it really well. I, I think I can still read French okay. Portuguese I can read pretty easily, but that's just because of Spanish. So I was I may narrow my focus down to Chinese and then I started learning Chinese. I took some classes actually in college and trying with Chinese. And I also started learning it on my own, watching things in Netflix and it was great. It was fun to learn the language. But, and I still use the language every once in a while. I, I know a person who speaks it and we, uh, sometimes we interact with each other in Chinese. So I still use the language somewhat in Chinese, but what I started realizing with Chinese is that I, first off, I realized once again, that my Spanish was not at the level that I wanted it to be at. Like I want to get as, almost as I want to personally with my Spanish, I want to get as good at Spanish as with my English, to be completely honest. Some people will say that's impossible, but I'll talk about that in a second. But with Chinese, I was like, uh, I'm not getting better with my Spanish and Chinese is kind of getting in the way of that. And then at the same time, I almost never run into anybody who speaks Chinese. Like I run into tons of people every literally I, almost every single day. I encounter someone speaking Spanish almost every single day, almost every single day. I hear it even when i'm in my bedroom i can be in my bedroom and there'll be some guys out there cutting the lawn 
that speak Spanish. And that's not me being prejudiced or racist saying that, you know, they cut lawns or whatever. Like that's literally what happens. Like literally I'll be in my bedroom and I hear some people out there cutting lawn or doing uh, yard work. And they'll, I'll hear them speaking Spanish from my bedroom. Well, yeah, my bedroom, which we're in my bedroom right now. It's not, it's not the most glorious location, but it's okay. It's, my, it's where we make the magic happen. No magic, actually, just a lot of just a lot of poverty. But anyway, my point is that I recognize I, I just never have an opportunity to use Chinese. I really have to go out of my way to ever use my Chinese. And I don't really plan to go to China. I don't really want to go to China. I want to visit China, perhaps, but I don't really want to spend too much time in China. And Taiwan is a small country. I, would, I wouldn't mind visiting it, but it's so far away. And I was just like, but Spanish, we got all these countries right nearby. We got a bunch of people that in Spanish that speak uh, the language here in the United States. My job would pay me more if I spoke Spanish at a high enough level to do my job in Spanish. Uh, you got Spanish in Europe. You got Spanish in Africa. You got Spanish all over. And you got Spanish in the, well, I already said the South and the Caribbean. So for me, I just feel like I need to focus on bettering my Spanish. And that would probably be a better usage of my time than getting better at uh, Chinese, a language that I don't really see a use of me ever having a use for, despite the fact that so many people speak it. Most of the people who speak Mandarin Chinese all live like like 95 percent of them or like 90 percent of them live in China. There's all types of Chinese dis uh, diaspora communities all across the world. That is true. A fairly large percentage of them are Cantonese speakers, a lot of them might speak Mandarin, but a very large percentage of them are actually from Hong Kong and they speak Cantonese. But uh, there's a lot of them that speak Chinese as well. There's a lot of Chinese people on the planet. They make up a very large percentage of the people that are on the planet. But for me, I just never really had uh, an opportunity. Every time I had an opportunity to speak Chinese, I pretty much had either happened just by chance or or, it, you know, I had to go out of my way to actually make that happen. So for me, I was like, it seems like a better usage of my time just to just improve my Spanish, like take the time that I would have put into Chinese and just put it either into Spanish or some other skill. One of the other skills that I thought about was doing math, you know, get work on my math skills instead of learning Chinese. Math will probably be more useful to me for a variety of different reasons. But, you know, for me, with all of these languages, I still have a desire to some degree or another to learn these languages. But one thing that I realize is that my desire to learn these languages have changed in a way. I'm not really interested in learning how to speak these languages anymore. Only languages I'm really interested in speaking now, because I've gotten rid of the language bug a little bit. For the most part right now, I'm interested in learning how to speak English better and then Spanish. When it comes down to French, Portuguese and Chinese, if anything, if I ever get back into trying to learn these languages, it would probably be more so just to be able to understand it, the inputs, the hearing, you know, being able to understand it when someone's speaking it and then reading it. Those are the main things. I really don't see a situation where I'm going to have that much use in being able to speak it. And I realized that you can really get good at learning. You can really get good at understanding and reading a language without really having the capability of speaking that that well. In fact, a lot of children of immigrants in the United States, for example, they can understand perfectly the language, for example, when they're listening to their parents speak, they've grown up with it all the time, they can understand it, but they can't really speak it that well. And that's kind of how if I ever get back into learning, uh, for example, French or Portuguese or, or even Chinese, uh, I'm probably going to just focus on being able to understand it, the inputs, the being able to understand when someone is speaking and when reading it, because that's really the main things I'm interested in when it comes down to these languages at this point in my language learning journey. But for the most part, that's really what happened with my entire language learning journey. Um, I'm pretty sure I probably left some things out there and, you know, skipped over some details, but that was the main thing. To me, I just think that one thing I also realize is that on the internet, you know, there's you always get points. Like everyone on the internet wants to learn their whatever languages that they're trying to learn. They want they want to learn like four, six languages. You want to be able to put in a thumbnail how I learned twenty languages. Like you want to be what do they call it? The Steve Kaufman. You want to be another Steve Kaufman. You speak five languages, six languages. For me, I'm just like, I'm not really interested in that anymore. I'm not interested in being able to just be able to, you know, say, oh, I'm a polyglot that speaks seven languages or whatever. I'm not interested in that. 
Right now, what I'm interested in more than anything is getting to such a high level in Spanish that people will say, as far as my language learning journey is concerned, I have other goals in life is outside of language. But as far as my language learning journey is concerned, I just want to get to such a high level with Spanish that people have a hard time discerning if I'm a native speaker. Now, a lot of the times people say that's impossible. And I talked about how I was going to talk about that. Well, I don't think that's true. I don't think it's and first off, let me just say right off the back, I've met people who speak English. I've met a lot of people who speak English at a level where you cannot tell that they are not native speakers. There was this French girl that I met in Costa Rica, and she said that uh, she really started honing in her English when she was like in, I think, high school or something like that, when she was living with some Americans in the South. And, you know, I didn't believe her that she was an American. To this day, I almost don't believe her that she wasn't American. She had a perfect accent. She was not a native English speaker. So this idea that you have to be a native English speaker in order to have a native level accent. And there's also a, a lady on YouTube. I can't remember her name, but her name is like, I think her name, she's from Israel. She, her name is like uh, in, learning English with Hassan or something like that. I can't remember her name for the life of me, but her English she said that she used to have a really strong accent and I, and I don't believe her because I, well, I have a hard time believing her. Let's just say that because her English is such a high level that it just almost hard to believe that she doesn't, she ever had an accent. There's also this other girl that I saw on uh, YouTube who talks is about uh, learning languages and whatnot. And she's not a native English speaker, but she's, I watch her old videos and her English was not, you could tell she had an accent, but now she's reaching the point, you know, over the course of you know the last two three years that she had a youtube channel you can see that her english is almost at that point where it gets weird when i say it gets weird like because the person is like you hear them speak and if i didn't know that she was spoken other languages and i heard her speak i would be like she sounds like she has an accent but if she just said like she just said a few words i wouldn't even recognize her accent like if she just said just a few like you know if she was trying to hide the fact that she was like she wanted to pretend to be american like she could almost pull it off. Like she's just that close. She would just have to, you know, tighten it up, say a few words, maybe not say a bunch of, you know, if she starts talking in paragraphs, you probably start to hear the accent a little bit more because that tends to happen. You start to pick up more and more of the foreign accent or whatever accent with the more someone speaks. Like, for example, a Canadian, uh, I can't hear a Canadian speak and say, oh, that's a Canadian, well, if they just say a few words, but once they start to speak like full sentences, have a conversation with them, eventually they usually end up saying something I'm like, oh, you're Canadian, aren't you? And they're like, oh, yeah, I'm Canadian. They might, I think one of us, like, I think they say flag instead of flag. I don't know. Check my math on that if any of you are Canadian. Um, and they have other little things that they say that, that really makes it, uh, makes them obvious that they're Canadian. So for me, uh, I think the idea that you can't get to the point where you're like almost native level is kind of a myth. I just think that a lot of people get to the point where they can communicate well and be understood well in the language, notwithstanding their accent. And they kind of just stop learning from that point. They just like, I don't need to get better at learning how to speak this language. And to me, I think that's where a lot of people, like for example, I know a lot of people who uh, have an accent, a foreign accent, and they just kind of feel like at this point, they don't really need to get better at, they don't need to improve their accent in English. They just don't need to do it at this point. They can communicate well, they can do their job well. Everyone understands pretty much what they're saying. They don't really need to work on their accent. And I think that's what happens with a lot of people. That's the reason why a lot of people think that you can't get better at a language. You can't get to a near native level. Because first of all, a lot of people who start learning one language get the language bug that I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Once you get the language bug, you want to start learning seven different languages like I started going doing. I, I learned, uh, you know, I got started learning Spanish, got the language bug. Then I went to French, Portuguese, and then Chinese. And then I was like, all right, I need to cut back on these languages and just focus on my main language, the one language that first off, I have tons of opportunities to use it because I don't have tons of opportunities to use French. There's a lot of French people on the planet, French speaking people. I don't have a ton of opportunities to use it. Uh, Portuguese, very rarely, I, I'll have to be in a strange neighborhood. Like when I was doing Uber and Lyft, I would run into people who speak Portuguese sometimes, but like I would have to be in a bizarre neighborhood. And in fact, I think Brazil is one of the countries that have like very few 
people who immigrate out immigrate out of that country. A lot of the times, from what I've heard from Brazilians, is that a lot of times they just move within their country. They don't do a lot of uh, moving outside to uh, foreign countries. So for me, uh, Portuguese is another language where there's very, you know, there's a lot of people who speak it, but it's very concentrated, the same way that Mandarin is. Uh, Mandarin is a lot of people who speak it, but they're very, very concentrated in in, in China. Uh, French is spread across the world, so French would be a more interesting language for me to learn, if anything, uh, since it's a lot more likelihood to run into someone, I feel like, that speaks French. I think if you just go based off the number of speakers, you will get confused about how likely it is that you to run into that language, especially within the United States. But even outside the United States, there's a look at the number of countries that use that language frequently, and that could be also a good tell sign, a telltale sign of how likely you are to run in that language like if you look at a map of french speakers across the world you have french a, a french speaking uh person in pretty much every single continent especially if you consider north and south america one continent as a lot of south americans and latin americans and people from other countries sometimes do then you have french in almost every single continent of the world because they were very very good at conquering other people and putting their foot down and saying, hey, listen, we own you. Canadians, you got Canadians that speak French, you got Africans, you got Belgians. You, I don't think I need to go through the list. You know that a lot of people speak French. So French to me, I feel like is a, is a lot more useful of a language. Spanish, very, very useful. I, I run into Spanish people all the day, all, all the time. Portuguese, I very rarely encounter people who speak Portuguese, but since it's so close to Spanish, to me, it doesn't cost that much for me to actually learn the language, whether it be time, effort, uh, all of that, at least it, as far as being able to understand it and being able to read it. But with Chinese, it does take a lot of effort to learn. I don't think it's as difficult as people think it is, but it does take a lot of effort to learn. And it doesn't really seem like I have that many opportunities to actually use the language. Um, another thing with Chinese, and I, there was a video online, I could probably pull it up that would probably do a good job at explaining it. But it seems like uh, the the social influence that uh, China had, like China has a big economy, economic, whatever, economically speaking, but socially speaking, they're very closed off. Like it, the biggest group of speakers in the language that I would had a very strong passion to learn, I really wanted to learn Chinese. But it just felt like it was like a language that was trying to keep me out of it. I, it was it was a language that was trying to keep me away from learning it. I was trying to learn Chinese, but it was like a lot of movies, like it, it like for example Korean. Let me give you an example. Korean. This is such a small little country, Korea, compared to China. But I run into Korean music. I run into Korean movies. I run into Korean TV shows. Even when I'm not trying to, I run into it all the time. I actually have a Korean church right right up the street from where I live. Like I run into Korean, especially online, more than I do anything else. It, it seems like media wise, and I don't really have the language to explain this well, but media wise, it is very difficult to find like a lot of media relative to the quantity of speakers when it comes down to Chinese. Like you would think that given there's so many people who speak the language, there will be so much easier to find content on line about you know on, on the language like for example youtube but you have to consider the fact that they can't use youtube korean people can use youtube so there's a lot of content there japanese people can use youtube even though these are less spoken languages they still are is so much easier to find languages like that like that there so one, that's one of the reasons why i kind of started losing the motivation to learn the language is because it was so hard to find interesting media on that language because there were so many people who uh the, because the, the country is so closed off socially um yeah so for me uh i think that one of these days i will probably uh, i mean I, I i still like i said sometimes use chinese but a lot of the times i'm kind of just oh my uh sometimes i just feel like uh uh, it, it was more trouble trying to even find an opportunity to even listen to the language relative to all these other languages. Like going online and finding someone who's speaking French was so easy. 
finding someone from, for example, China, not like a lot of the things I would find online of someone speaking Chinese or something with that, it would, it would be someone from uh, Taiwan, for example, and they use the traditional writing system, which was a little bit harder for me to read. So it was just like, I'm learning more so mainland Chinese, but I'm having to read more of offland Chinese. Yeah, offland is not the, probably the term that they use, but learning uh, Taiwanese Chinese, which I mean, which is fine as far as the spoken languages, but the written languages caused some issues with that. So to me, that kind of demotivated me, just the fact that it, the country is such a closed off country. And I don't really understand why China does that. I feel like they would have more influence over the world, even the world's economy, if they were a little bit more open to a cultural exp exchange. I feel like if they switched, if they, but if, uh, but if they did that, if they were open, more open to cultural exchange, the issue is that they run the risk and they don't want to run the risk of having, for example, American culture influence their people, which is understandable. It seems like American culture and European cultures has a very strong way of influencing uh, other cultures but uh let's see here oh wait a second we have a comment the first comment of the stream how good is your memory um let me read that again because i forgot what you said how good is your memory no i'm joking uh my memory is uh i don't know how good my memory is it's, it's hard to say because it depends on the what it is like for example i would, sometimes i would read a book on tax law and I'll read the book and I'm thinking like, I think that I understand, you know, I don't think I understood anything. I don't think I remember anything that I just read. But then after, you know, I'll start talking to somebody or giving tax advice to somebody. And then I realize like, wait a second, where did I get all of that information that I just gave that person? And I did, I'm like, oh, wait, I read a book about that. And I didn't even realize that the information from that book went into my brain somewhere. I just thought that I didn't remember it. So for me, I think that memory is a weird thing because sometimes things get put into your brain's memory system and you don't even realize it's in there. And then some things that you think it should be in there is not actually in there. Like um, sometimes I think that I'm 27 and I'm actually 26. And now since my birthday is coming, I'm, my brain is telling me I'm 28. And, you know, so memory is a weird thing. But um like I can't, I would probably have to think about what I ate yesterday and tell you properly what I ate yesterday, but there are certain things that I can remember. I would say my memory is probably about average with that being said. Um, it just depends. It also depends on how much sleep I've been getting, but I would say my memory is about average. Uh, when it comes down to learning a language though, I feel like you, your memory doesn't need to be all that good. Your language is something that if you use the language, a lot of the times you'll pick it up. In fact, a lot of the times human beings don't realize how good they are at learning languages. It's just like you just don't have the need or use for learning the languages, then you're not going to really learn it that well. Like if you're just trying to learn language as a hobby, well, unless you have very strong motivation to learn that language, you're probably not going to be able to get very good at it or if you have a lot of opportunity to use that language um that was one of the issues like i said with chinese that I, I just didn't seem like i had a lot of opportunity to use it even from an online setting it seemed like it was pretty difficult to have an opportunity to use the language uh let's see here for some reason it comes up faster on this other side of the screen that i have that i have pulled up but let's see your comment says how good is your conjunction skills in spanish how good is my conjunction skills in Spanish? Pues, la balda, as the Dominicans might say. Uh, it it could use work. Something that I always have an issue with is subjunctive. I have issues with subjunctive uh, sometimes. You know, sé cuando puedo usar esto y no debo usar esto, pero hay que aprender. I can aprend uh I know certain situations like this is definitely a situation where I can use a subjunctive, but there are situations where I don't really know when I'm supposed to use the subjunctive or not, and I'm not really sure so when it comes down to for example the subjunctive that could be a little bit difficult, but when it comes down to like just basic present tense uh conjunction that that's super easy. 
when it comes down to conjunction in general, it, it's really not that difficult, especially if you're not speaking. Sometimes when you're speaking, it can get a little bit more difficult because you're kind of thinking as you go. Like right now, and even with English, like a lot of the times I might just be thinking in my brain, I'm going to go this way with the conversation and then I end up going that way. And if you're doing that in a foreign language, that actually makes it a little bit more complex to get uh, what you're trying to say out correctly. And sometimes that can cause some issues when you're speaking with someone and you make a mistake that you would have probably made in English, but they think that you're making that mistake because of Spanish. Like, for example, I was in Walmart earlier today and I was having a, a, a some type of canvasser in Walmart. You know how Walmart sometimes they have these people that in Walmart trying to sell you things. And I'm like, why does Walmart allow that? I don't know, but whatever. She walks up to me. She was very pretty. If, by the way, if she's watching this, I should have asked for your number, but I didn't. I was trying to be respectful. But anyway, uh, so because she was working. But anyway, so she um, walks up to me. She starts, you know, trying to speak some, uh, uh, sell me something or whatever. And I'm like, I just literally couldn't understand what she was saying. Like she was almost like she was speaking fast and I just couldn't understand. She didn't have an accent. She was an American. Like she just perfect English. It just, for some reason, I couldn't understand what she said. Like, and it happened like three times when we were talking and I was like, what did you say? And I was like, I can't hear you. What did she say? And if I was speaking in a foreign language, like if I was speaking Spanish to somebody, they would, especially if they spoke English, they would just switch to English because they would have thought that I didn't understand or hear what they were saying because of their foreign, them speaking Spanish. But, but, uh, sometimes I just don't understand things. Maybe I'm hard of hearing. Maybe I'm just stupid. I don't know. Probably a little bit of a combination of both. But uh, when it comes down to conjugation of just like regular basic verbs and when it comes down to like present tense, regular basic verbs, that's pretty easy. When it comes down to commands and things like that, no haga eso, haceme eso. And also I have a habit since I was in Costa Rica when I was learning Spanish, I, uh, I also often use vos, vos, uh, vos podes hacer esto. Uh, tienes un gato en lugar de tiene, tienes un gato. It's been so long since I said tienes that I almost don't know how to say it anymore. I usually just say tienes porque when I was in Costa Rica, I just use tienes. But I mean, when it comes down to reading, though, my reading skills have always been pretty good. Pretty much from the after the first five months of learning Spanish, my reading skills were pretty high level. I would learn. Uh, I, I can I read books and stuff like that all the time in Spanish. I think I've probably read like five books this year in Spanish. How common are native speakers doing how so how common are native speaker doing full conjugation when speaking? How common are native speaker doing full conjugation when speaking? What do you mean by full conjugation? I don't know if you're still here, but uh, what do you mean by full conjugation? Because if you mean like full conjugation, like, uh, for example, in Spanish, I'm assuming, because that's what your last message was about. Uh, if you're talking about like, como puedo hablar español, like, you know, they, if you're talking about like just like regular conjugation, like that would mean all the time. Like, I mean, like literally it's a requirement of speaking, like they conjugate pretty much whenever it's appropriate to do so, they do the same Whenever we would conjugate the verb in English is basically how often they would conjugate. But if you mean like if you're saying like how often do they put like the the subject in front of the word like yo puedo in lugar of, instead of saying uh, puedo, then then that would say, I would say they don't do that that often. A lot of the times they would just say puedo, puedo hacer esto in lugar instead of saying uh, yo puedo hacer esto, and same thing with other verbs do l s but i mean like it's basically impossible to speak the language without conjugating the verbs it's kind of like saying english walk to store by house like that doesn't make any sense you know like you can't really who walked to the store i mean i, I said house but like walk to walk to store by things like who's walking to the store who's buying the things like you need some conjugation in there even in english a lot of the times we don't really think about conjugation in english because that's not how it's taught to us we don't get taught conjugation when they're when we were taking your english classes in elementary school middle school and all that you don't really get taught english 
as you're conjugating verbs. We don't really conjugate verbs, obviously, to the same degree or the same way that they do in Span uh, Spanish, but we still conjugate verbs, especially uh, irregular verbs like to be. Uh, I am, you are, he, she, it, is, is and so on. And it's the same thing um, with French. French is actually pretty similar to English as far as conjugation, because a lot of the times on paper, you have to do all these different conjugations. But a lot of the times the actual spoken language is actually pretty similar. Let's see here. I'm referring to future and past tense. Uh, yeah, well, future and past tense, they use that depending because there's like two different types of future tenses. You can say, for example, uh, voy al parque. Or you could say, ere a parque. So there's two different future tenses, and there's different past tenses as well, technically as well, but it's getting to the weeds a bit. But essentially, uh, excuse me, um, essentially, they use it as basically as much as you would use it in English. So, for example, future tense, past tense, you, how often do you use that in English? If you say, I'm going to the store well you would have to use the future future tense i'm going is the future boy but i mean technically boy it's kind of the present tense of that word but you're speaking about something in the future so that that gets a little bit more complicated but um so like for example i say boy al parque i'm going to the park that's technically the future tense boy is is i'm going but technically it's the future but this is the same thing in english i am is future is present tense in English and going, but it's like you're saying something that you're going to do in the future. So that's technically the present tense, but um, yeah. So if you mean the present tense, I mean, if you, if you mean the future tense, like ere al parque, like I will go to the park, or um, tendré tres hijos, I'll have three kids. Uh, that just depends on the Spanish speaker and where they're from. Uh, I hear some people use that form of the future more often in certain countries than other people. But uh, I would say the future tense is as common as you would expect someone to be, to be talking about the future. And then as far as the past tense, uh, the past tense is used all the time. Uh, I mean, it's used very, very frequently because you when you use the past tense, uh, in English, it's the same time you would use the past tense, usually, not always, but usually you would use the same past tense in Spanish. Like, you know, if I say, I went to the store, well, the same thing in Spanish, you have to use the past tense. You won't use the present tense to say that I'm going to the store if you were talking about the past. As you, same thing with English. Let's see. I'm using ear is the shortcut instead of using the future tense conjugation of the verb. Yeah, okay, so if you mean like the adding the E or the AS at, at the end of the non-conjugated verb in order to form the future tense of the word, then yeah, that is that is a thing. Um, but I don't think that, I think it really depends on the Spanish speaker, but from what I hear, I listen to Spanish all day. I mean, I listen to hours, 20, 30 hours of Spanish. Most of the podcasts I listen to, uh, a lot of the times when I listen to podcasts or watch shows on YouTube or whatever, a lot of the times I, I do Spanish. I listen to a lot of English still, just the nature of who I am. I'm a native English speaker, but I do listen to a lot of Spanish. And um, I, I hear a lot of using the air, like boy or ba and things like that to talk about the future. Um, but sometimes people will use that. Then the day... If you're not wanting to use that future tense just because you don't want to learn how to learn it, that's a different story. I think you should just learn how to learn it. It's not that complicated. Um, you don't have to use it, but if you're trying to learn Spanish, uh, I would say just learn how to use it just because it's useful. It needs to be used every once in a while. And uh, it's not as conjugating verbs is not as complicated as school makes it seem, for example, like when you're learning it in classroom and all of that is not as complicated as it seems. In fact, once you start speaking the language, you're actually using the language, you don't like learning the conjugation. It's just become easy. It just becomes easy. Um, you, do, you don't really have to think about it. It's just something that you understand. It's something with your native language. Like you don't need to learn 
conjugate well there's not a lot of conjug conjugation in english but you don't need to really think about it you just because you're using it so often you just kind of know where to go i mean you get some people you might be like i be doing that or i'll be doing this i'll be doing that instead of saying i you know conjugating the word correctly but the point is you you can speak uh you you can speak it without really thinking about it and the same thing happens with spanish you just learn these conjugations you hear it often you use it often you'll learn how to do it when it comes down to the past tense though you just have to learn that one like there's no way if ands or buts about the past tense the past tense and any language pretty much you have to learn how to use um you get some languages where they say there's no such thing as the past tense. Like Chinese people will say there's no such thing as the past tense. They don't really have a past tense. Yes, they do. If you talk about the past tense, if, if, if a human being wants to talk about the past tense, there is a way to do it, and you have to learn how to do that. You have to learn how to speak about the past. Um, so uh, the past tense is one of those things. I mean, which one do you use? Do you use... Um, for example, the preterite, I think it's called uh, the predit, preterite or something like, and then there's the past progressive. I, don't, I can't remember the terminology. I just know how to use the language, but um, there's the two different ones and learning how to use them are is important as well. But you don't really, a lot of the times in school, they teach you this rigid as far as the rigidity of when, what past term you use. But from my experience with Spanish, it seems like it's not as rigid when it comes down to which past tense do you use as far as, do you say, uh, estaba, or uh, for example, if you say, um, let me think of an example, uh, Comía algo. Uh, I was eating something. Or comí algo. That's not the best example. I can't think of one off the top of my head. But like using those two different past tenses that I was just referring to, like from my experience with Spanish and observing people speak it, it is not as uh, rigid as the textbooks and teachers seem to make it seem. Uh, make it seem. For example, I will be watching a video in Spanish with subtitles in Spanish. And a lot of the times, especially of the original language of that thing that I'm watching was not Spanish, a lot of the times they won't match up. For example, they might one might say yo comí, the other one might say yo comía. And I'm like, all right, well, these are native speakers probably making these subtitles and making the dub if it's a not originally English content. Uh, so they obviously have some disagreement on, or at least have some flexibility rather, of when you can use comi, when you use comia. There are some certain times when it's obvious and when it's pretty strict when you're supposed to use one or the other. But yeah. All right. So this looks like we've been going on for about an hour. And I think that my plan was to go on for about an hour. And I pretty much talked about my entire language learning journey. Um... Right about now, as far as where I'm at with languages, I still, you know, dabble with French and Portuguese just because I just I enjoy those languages. I still dabble a little bit with Chinese, not as much with Chinese, but to the extent that I have people that I know that know the language, I will use that language. But for the most part, I I just uh, dabble a little bit. I, I'm just dabbling uh, with for the other languages but for the most part i just focus on spanish at this point for some reason your comment pops up faster on this side of the screen let's see here <clears throat> portuguese is going to be my next language i think what how many languages do you speak right now or anyone who else is watching this right now i got three people watching this you're probably about to dip out real quick but Drop how many languages you speak, which languages you speak. Let me know. Let me know. Uh, what languages are you learning? What is your level at these different languages? Let me know that. Right about now, with my the five languages that I have learned uh, at different levels, at you know my peak, my peak with Spanish is probably roughly right now, or maybe when I was in Costa Rica. But I would say right now I'm probably better than I was when I was at Costa Rica. Um, so my peak in Spanish is probably right now, and I'm pretty good at Spanish, but I still need some work with with speaking it. I can understand it pretty well, but speaking it is something that I need some uh, work on. When it comes down to my level in French, my peak level, I was able to have a conversation, read books, and watch shows in French. I did have some un difficulty understanding certain people in French, uh, but I guess that's the same thing with English and Spanish. But 
I still got a pretty good level as far as understanding it. I could read books in the language pretty well. And as far as uh, writing the language and uh, speaking it, I was okay, but I could have a conversation with Portuguese or, 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 or let me finish with French uh, with French. My current level with French is I can't really speak it at all. I can speak it a little bit, but I can, can't really speak it at all anymore. I can understand it somewhat well. If the person is speaking clearly and, you know, very enunciating and kind of like a more professional level French, but they're not talking about like a super complex topic. I can still understand that reading it. My reading skills have dropped significantly faster than my understanding ability, but I can still read it somewhat. Every once in a while, I might go on Reddit and read some things in French, you know, French people talking about someone cheating on them because I hear they do that often. And um, what other languages? Uh, okay, so yeah, so my French skills is not that good anymore. But Portuguese, my peak level Portuguese was never above my French or my Spanish, but it was still pretty good. I would ha could have a conversation there. I could understand it okay as long as the speaker wasn't too, uh, their accent wasn't too sh strong in the language, so to speak. Uh, if they spoke, you know, enunciated and they spoke in a manner that was clear to me. Portugal Portuguese, I, I, I always had a hard time understanding Portuguese from Portugal. Brazilian Portuguese, I had a lot easier time to understand. Uh, and so still to this day, I can still understand Portuguese pretty well. I can watch videos and stuff like that in Portuguese. It's a lot harder for me to do that in French now. I would say my Portuguese level is now higher than my French, which was never the case when I was actually learning those two languages. My French was always higher than my Portuguese, notwithstanding my Spanish ability. But right now, my Portuguese ability is... Um, is is still not very good um i can basically my portuguese ability right now is just kind of the last little bit that i have from when i was actually pretty good at portuguese uh and then also my spanish like that's the only thing that's keeping my portuguese somewhat alive with french i don't know how my french is still alive i don't understand how sometimes i can watch a video and still understand french and still read it uh, some to some degree i don't understand that a lot of it has gone away but i think if i just started learning french like that it would come back those languages are still in there somewhere. That's where you asked me what my memory is like. My memory is maybe not the best, but it's still in there somewhere because I got to such a high level with with French and not like a super high level. Like not, I'm not saying like, like out of one out of 10, I'm not saying I was like a 10 or a nine or eight, but I was like, yeah, I would say from one to 10, I got to like a five. Yeah, and with Portuguese, I maybe I got to like a four, you know? I would say like a 10 is like a you know native level PhD level like you can have super complex conversations about all different types of topics and all that uh, so that's kind of the scale I'm using let's see here oh yeah and Chinese uh, that was the last one here Chinese uh, I was never ever really able to have a conversation in Chinese I never got to that point never was able to read a book or watch shows and actually understand what was going on without subtitles like I was never really good but towards the end of my like peak learning ability with chinese i was actually getting to the point where i could understand a good amount of it when someone was speaking to it like i was i would understand like full sentences and it felt so good that's one of the reasons why i think a lot of times people start learning a bunch of different languages when it's probably better just to focus on like one or two is because they they start uh they the the joy to go from that point where you just don't understand anything to where you can actually understand full sentences and you're able to speak full sentences and people can understand what you're saying that joy is so much more fun than once you're like for example where i'm at with spanish right now where like you can already kind of speak it really really well so like an incremental increase is not nearly as noticeable than for example with my chinese where i could actually speak the language I mean, where I could not speak the language at all. I could understand anything. And then I could actually go from not understanding anything to actually understanding a full sentence. It's very, very noticeable. And uh, it's not as noticeable your increases in skill once you get to a very, very high level. And I think that's part of the reason why a lot of people, once they get to a certain level, they kind of just stop learning other languages. And I would stop learning that main language and they start learning other languages. And um, instead of trying to master that, for me, I want to kind of just be more narrow minded when it comes down to my language learning journey than I am now. I mean, than I was before. I speak English and navigational Spanish. I just need to learn enough to travel at this point. LOL. See, that's not a bad thing. I mean, when it comes down to Spanish, though, there's so much content online. There's so much music. There's so much different types of music. So if you don't like one type of music, you can do other types of music. 
One thing that I've found recently that I like is that I found rap music in Spanish. Dominican rap music is something that I've found. I listen to rap music. Uh, maybe it's not my proudest genre of music that I listen to, but I listen to all types of music. And uh, I never really listened to Spanish speaking music before, but uh, when I got into Spanish rap music recently, I learned about it. I was like, this is kind of cool. I like this. And uh, you got all different types of flavors. You got reggaeton. You got like kind of Spanish version of country music. You get the Mexican music. Uh, it, it's really cool. And you get all different types of content. Pretty much anything you want to learn about in English, you can learn about it in Spanish. But it's a good Spanish is a good language to learn. There's a lot of if you live in the United States, which I don't know if you do. Uh, a lot of people in the United States speak that language. Uh, a lot of people in America speak American as well. I speak I speak Maryland. That's the reason I put the Maryland flag for English in my thumbnail. Let's see. Based on the S.E.R.F.A., how would you rank your language languages, you know, based on? A, B, and C. Let me pull that up again because I, I've heard of it and I used to study those things. I will put a hold up. Let me uh, put this down for a second. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Let's see here. The CRF here. Let me pull this up. Chingada madre. Este no, esto no es lo que estoy buscando. ¿Qué es esto? Let me turn this mic down because my computer is overheating. Oops, I forgot that I was muted. Um, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, since you asked for this, for this, I'm going to look at, I'm going to go based off my peak with the language and where I'm at now with the language. Because like I said, a lot of these languages, I started learning, got pretty good, and then I stopped learning them. And let's see if I can't. Oops, I'm not scaring the screen that I'm supposed to be sharing. Este, vamos a cambiar esto para que pueda verlo. Y si quieren, yo puedo hablar español con vos. Here we go. That's it. There she is. Aquí estamos. All right. And we can zoom in on this John a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That's it. Yeah, we tighten that up real quick. All right. Here we are. Where am I at with these languages? Um, let's see. Let's start with English. I would say my English is probably like C1, depending on what I'm talking about. If I'm talking about a subject that I'm not familiar with, then I would probably say like B2, my English. But all jokes aside, I would say... Let's see. Why do they have different? I never seen these different classifications. I just schools, general, and education, higher education, business, hmm. business, C one higher. 
I'm going to ignore all of these and just focus on these here because these are the ones that I've heard about before. Okay, that's what we're going with. All right, so I would say English C1, C2. That all jokes aside, um, I'm pretty good at English for the most part. I'm actually probably shocking a few natives right now. Oh, yeah. You're on mute. Yeah, I, hopefully I unmuted myself. Can you hear me now? Drop a one in the chat if I've unmuted myself now. Um, all right. I'm pretty sure I did, though. I can hear myself now, naturally. I have this thing hooked up in my mic so I know when I'm muted or not. And I just forgot that I was not hearing myself. So uh, you asked earlier how good my memory is. Obviously, it's dog water. Anyway, um, so English. That regard, so what is it? Next, Spanish. I don't know. When it comes down to Spanish... I don't really like this uh, chart that I have pulled up here. Is there a way that I can get a better chart? Uh, is there a way I can get a better chart? Because I really don't like this chart. It's usually it doesn't usually look like this. It usually has a better yes. It's the independent user proficiency. Chingada madre. All right. I think I might just have to bite the bullet and use this one, but I don't really like this one. Vamos a ver. Just give me a second here. All right. You know what? Advance first, primary. All right, we're going to switch to this one. This one, it seems like it's basically the same thing, but just gives a better job at explaining what the actual things are. And we need to zoom in. ¿Qué está pasando, güey? What's this thing in here? Why don't you move that out of my way? All right. Open image and new tab. Grab that image. Copy that. We're going to bring this over here so we can get a different screen. And boom. Then we're going to zoom out a little bit. And this is basically the same one as before, but it's, if I'm not mistaken, slightly different. But it's, it's easier for me to understand this. All right. Let's, let's move on. Um... All right, so I would say with my Spanish, I don't know, because a lot of the times we language learners have a, a tendency to to overestimate our abilities with learning a language. So I would say with my Spanish, I would give myself a B2 when it comes down to overall, like, you know, if I were combinating, uh, combining all of the things, when it comes down to reading of the language, I would say probably if I had to guess, probably C1. If I had to say, as far as like speaking the language, I would probably say maybe B2. If I had to say, as far as being able to understand when someone is speaking the language, I would probably say B, B2. And I, and I, I said B2 just before that, but I meant to say B1. Um, as far as uh, speaking the language, however, uh, I was saying B1 as far as understanding the language when someone's speaking to me is B2. Uh, reading it, like I said, C1. And then as far as writing it, I don't know. I don't. I barely write the language, so I would probably say maybe B1 to B2. As far as French is concerned, we're going to have to come down just a bit here. As far as French, because that's the second language I learned, I'm kind of going in the order in which I learned these languages. So obviously, I went with English first, and then I went to Spanish. Um, as far as my Spanish is, and my French is concerned, I would say right about now, my speaking ability, I don't know. It's probably like an A2. It's probably like A2. Uh, it's like not good, but I can still say some things. It could probably... It could probably get better when I was at my peak with my Spanish. I mean, my French, because in my Spanish, my peak and my current is basically the same. But with my French, I'm going to go with peak and and current, my peak ability and my current ability. My current ability is probably like A2. Uh, as far as speaking the, the ability, my overall ability, I would say maybe probably like 
uh, my overall ability with French, I would say maybe like B1 to B A2, one of those two overall ability. Um, when it comes down to speaking it, like I said, maybe A1 or A2. When it comes down to understanding with someone speaking it, maybe once again, A1 or A2. Uh, when it comes down to reading it, probably like A2 to AB. Uh, so yeah, I would say around that range. So I guess that would actually average out to maybe like A2. I'm very basic in French, but at my peak, I would say that I was probably B1 at pretty much everything. B1 in pretty much everything. Like I said, I'm trying to be somewhat conservative with these estimations. As far as um, French is concerned, let's see here. Uh, let me move this over here for a second. Uh, so you can understand the main ideas of complex text on both concrete and abstract topics, including technical discussions in their field and specializations. Uh, yes, when it comes down to that, I mean, I can probably do that pretty well in, in Spanish. Um, when it comes down to fields that I'm unaware of, I mean, I can't really understand them in English uh, that well. So, I mean, if someone's talking to me about quantum physics, I mean, I've used to read books about quantum physics, so I'm probably not completely an idiot when it comes down to quantum physics. So maybe that's not the best example, but if someone talks to me about high level quantum physics, I'm probably going to get lost eventually. Like I, like I said, I used to read books about quantum physics because it was just an interesting topic to me. Physics and, and biology and to a lesser degree, chemistry, very interesting topics to me. Um, so for me, uh, but like if someone starts talking to me about some high level physics concepts, I probably will get lost in the weeds or, or something like coding. Whenever someone people start talking about coding related topics, uh, I get. I start getting a little bit confused. I'm like, all right, I don't understand what you guys are talking about, like computer related things. It's. Uh, I, I, I get kind of lost in the weeds. So for me. To the, and so far as English is concerned, if it's certain complex topics, I can't really understand them in English. So I don't really see how I would be able to do that in a foreign language that I was not raised speaking. So I wouldn't say that. Uh, but when it comes down to English, though, I, I can probably discuss high level topics in fields that I'm familiar with, uh, with a high degree of proficiency in English. And as far as Spanish, I probably can't do that. So I would probably say not C2 in Sp definitely not C2 in Spanish, but C1 in Spanish, I would probably say that uh, depending on the topic, then ye uh, perhaps yes. Uh, if I'm being conservative with my Spanish, which I think I should be, I think that overall I would say B2. I don't know what I said before, but that's where we're going back with there. When it comes down to French, however, uh, going back to French, when it comes down to, I would say just pretty much overall French in pretty much every category, I would say that I'm right now A2 to B1. And when I used to speak French relatively well, I would say I was a solid B1, conservatively estimated and a little bit more arrogantly, perhaps B2. But I don't think I was ever at B2 with French. I would probably just say B1. And right now I'm probably like at A2 uh, to A1. Um, no, probably not A1 but like a2 um as far as portuguese is concerned at my peak i would probably say maybe like an a2 to b1 in pretty much every category as far as as far as reading concerned i was probably b1 to b2 like i was pretty i mean maybe not b2 but i was definitely b1 when it comes down to reading because in spanish i was pretty good at reading like reading in spanish is my strongest skill I read all the time, even from the beginning, reading was always my strongest skill. I read books. I just literally spent three hours today reading about tax law in Spanish. So like Spanish is pretty up there um, when it comes down to reading. Um, so Portuguese is pretty close to Spanish. So a lot of the times that leaks over to a large degree and even to the extent that you don't really know what a word means, it has a different meaning. A lot of the times the meaning is related you can see how they're related to the meaning in Spanish. So I would say that uh, at my peak level, I was probably at B1 when it came to reading, uh, maybe B2. Um, 
probably like a, a solid B1, a very solid B1 when it came down to reading. When it came down to speaking, I would say pretty much everything B1 when it came down to Portuguese when I got, when I, you know, when I first started learning the language. Now, when I, you know, maybe if I'm being less conservative, B2, but I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I would say B1. And... Uh, let's switch that back over um so and as far as uh oh, so we did portuguese um oh yeah i don't know if i already mentioned this but as far as my skills right now i would say with portuguese a2 to a b or a2 to b1 um a solid a solid a2 a possible b1 just because of spanish and because of my previous experience with learning the language it has kept me pretty okay at Portuguese relative to my French, where my French has deteriorated rapidly relative to what it, where I was at when I was at my peak. Um, when it comes down to uh, Chinese, I would just say Chinese. I, w I was at A1 probably the entire time. Maybe a, maybe maybe A2 if I'm being unduly confident in myself but probably just a1 i never really got out of the most basic level of a1 um so yeah i don't know i've never actually taken this test before like you know there's a test that you can take to see where you're at actually um i would probably i hear they cost money and i don't want really to want to spend the money i think the best way to actually prove whether or not you can do something is actually do it and see if it works out like for example if i watch a video in spanish and i'm trying to be as honest and 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 true about how well i understand what that person is saying um like where how well do i do with that and if i know that i just i'm not picking up what they're saying or maybe I understand the words that they're saying, but for some reason I just can't put it all together, which happens with a language. Sometimes a person will say something, and you understand everything they're saying, but just for some reason you can't really put it together, the meaning of what they're saying. That happens to me a lot with uh, Chinese. When I sometimes, if I'm texting someone in Chinese or something like that, they sometimes I understand all of the characters in that language. I just can't put together the meaning of what they're overall saying. Let's see here. If I could get to B1 with Spanish, I'd be happy. Yeah, B1 is not a bad level, I think, with any language. Uh, I mean, really, when it comes down to these scales here, when it comes down to all of these B2, B1, BA2, I think that a lot of people, myself included probably, as I just went through all of these now, a lot of us probably overestimate our abilities um, with this. So... I might be saying that when it comes down to reading, I think I'm B2 or C1 and I might take the test and then it turns out I'm actually freaking B1. Like, who knows? But um, when it comes down to speaking, I definitely would say I'm nowhere near C1 when it comes down to speaking the language. But I don't know. It really depends because when it comes down to understanding the language when someone is speaking to you, like uh spanish is one of those languages where there's so many different accents so many different vocabulary words like if you ask uh, what how do you say a hanger like you know the thing you hang your clothes on how do you say that in spanish you ask people from all different types of countries uh they will say different words some of them at least will say a different word or even if they say the same word it sometimes it might be like one word might end with an A and the other word ends with an O. You know, sometimes it's masculine, sometimes it's feminine in one language, but it's basically the same word. Um, when it comes down to food, certain foods are basically the same food, and but they have different names for that food in that different country. And it's just like, that's one of the things that makes Spanish so difficult. Uh, it's just so much diversity in the quant the speakers and the names for like everyday items can be different i mean just think about a car you know you go to argentina they might say auto you go to uh, how you call it um spain they might say coche you go to another place they might say carro uh 
so like just that alone can make it more difficult the different simple vocabulary and then once you get into people who are like just like average everyday people who use you know like average everyday people in real life they use a lot of slang they do a lot of combining of words like for example in english i might say i want to go to the i want to go to the store and that's like if you actually listen to that there's so much sounds being combined whereas in spanish uh, they do the same thing they might say uh, voy para allá. Voy para allá. Goes to voy para allá. To voy para allá. And that can complicate things a lot when you're learning a language. Uh, but then you get some speakers who speak very enunciate and speak very clearly. and Or just with an accent you're familiar with. And you can understand perfectly. But then there's another accent. Like a lot of the times with Domin like people who learn Spanish... Uh, they can be very, they can be, you know, freaking C1 when it comes down to understanding, I don't know, Mexican Spanish or Sp Spain Spanish. And I know there's different accents in these countries, but just to say like uh, the capital of these countries, whatever accent they have in these capital of those countries. Now you can be C1 at understanding that. But then when it comes down to like a Dominican Spanish or Puerto Rican Spanish or Cuban Spanish, the Caribeños, digamos. A lot of the times people will have a hard time understanding them because their accents are so hard to understand for a lot of people who are learners of that language. So it's the same thing with all these other languages, I'm sure, with French, uh, Portuguese, and I know for sure Chinese. I know for sure for Chinese um, that there are just certain accents that are just significantly harder to understand just because of the way that people pronunciate their words. Uh, can be very very different and there also can be different words for the same objects a lot of the times that can make it more difficult but part of that makes it a lot easier if you know where you're going to be learning the language if you know where you want to travel like a lot of people want to go to Spain so if you know you're going to Spain you know you need to at least be able to understand vosotros estáis Estáis muy guapo hoy. Or, Estáis muy guapo hoy. Yeah, algo así. But, um, I don't know. I guess I can, uh, maybe one of these days make a video of me trying to uh, speak French. Je peux, je peux parler un petit peu de français, mais maintenant, le français c'est très mal, très mauvais, mal, parce que j'ai pas pratiqué les langues, mais in, dans le futur, je vais, je vais euh, parler, je vais parler le long. Mais maintenant, j'ai pas une raison pour apprendre le long. Et yeah, portugais, euh, je ne peux pas parler beaucoup bien le portugais, mais c'est un idioma très beau. Eu gosto e o idioma muito, mas eu não, não tenho razão por hablar, falar e o idioma. Eu gosto o ilo. I don't know if I said that right. I just threw a lot of Spanish in there. Um, e pois em espanhol eu puedo falar. Eu puedo fazer este vídeo em espanhol se quero. Pois eu estou falando espanhol por como quatro por la cuarta de mi vida, por la mitad de mi vida, y pues yo debo ser capaz de hablarlo muy bien, pero yo sí, yo tengo un acento cuando hablo español, cuando hablo español, pero pues eso es parte de la vida, tenemos acentos todo el mundo, y pues qué más, qué más está. Vamos a saber cómo ver esto. All right, so we've been going on for some time now. I think I'm pretty much done. I've kind of been on for longer than I was supposed to, but um, let me know what you think, uh, and have a good day. Goodbye.